There are many different responsibilities of a coach. Coaches have a responsibility to many different people. These include parents, the club or school they are working for, any other colleagues or coaches they are working with. Some of the main responsibilities I'm going to be talking about include legal obligations, professional conduct, health and safety and equal opportunities. The first responsibility I'm going to be talking about is legal obligation. Coaches must be aware of their legal responsibilities, especially if they are working and supervising younger ages, as there are many different types of abuse which can occur. The main ones include physical, emotional, sexual, social and neglect. Before a coach is assigned their role, they must know what their duties are and follow any acts and laws. One includes the Children's Act 2004. This looks at a child's well-being and states all children should be healthy, enjoy life, make a positive contribution and remain safe in their environment. Guidelines have been laid down so any individual who works alongside children know how they should be looked after in the eyes of the law. The Act tries to avoid any mistreatment of children, so all coaches must be aware of the guidelines they must abide by. Duty of care is a legal obligation put in place to ensure the safety or well-being of others. Coaches have a duty of care to safeguard all children that they teach and protect them from harm. All children that are being taught by the coach have the right to be protected. So, at the beginning of a session, a coach should do a register, find out about any injuries any individuals may be carrying, if people have any medical conditions, uh, make sure that all children's emergency contacts are written down. The coach is acting as the role of the children's parent. A coach must make sure all the people they are coaching are safe and are protected from harm. Younger children do need more safeguarding than older as they tend to be more vulnerable and need more looking after. When being assigned as coach, it needs to be important that they have the qualifications needed to coach, such as a level one in sport. It's important that they know some kind of or know or have some kind of first aid training and understand about health and safety and know the different signs of abuse so that they can alert someone if they think one of their pupils is being abused. If they do think they see some signs of abuse, they should monitor it and if the signs continue, they should report it. Many organisations such as the CPSU, Child Protection and Sport Unit, helps to minimise the risk of child abuse during sporting activities. The organisation is in partnership with the NSPCC and Sport England, Northern Ireland and Wales. It aims to safeguard and protect young children and young people in sport. It does this by talking to young people and children, adding safeguarding knowledge to policies, giving safeguarding advice to sport organisations and much more. To minimise abuse by coaches and volunteers, before they are given the role, they are usually DBS or CRB checked. Criminal Records Bureau or, or DBS check is used when someone is hired for a job, such as a coach for a football team. The CRB check shows if the person has any criminal records. It helps to prevent abuse or the mistreatment of people. A professional paid coach who is at a team fixture has a responsibility of safeguarding all individuals who are there and they are looking after. after. Whereas a volunteer at a casual social league doesn't have as much responsibility to safeguard them. The volunteer should however still be looking out and making sure everyone is protected from harm, but they won't be trained and know as much about safeguarding. And then finally, transport wise, coaches aren't allowed to take any children in the car with them when travelling to away matches. When taking a team to fixtures, a minibus must be used and the coach must have a licence and be minibus trained. If there aren't enough seats in the minibus and the other only possibility is going by coach's car, another adult must be with them. If a casual social league was taking place, then the volunteer who is organising the event should say that everyone should meet at where they're doing the league so transport isn't needed for them. So if it was children, the parents would drop their child to the event, opposed to the volunteer taking all the children to the local league. This will reduce the chances of abuse as parents will be taking their own child to and from the fixture. But if a team from a school club or an outside pay club were to have a fixture, the coach would tend to, or it would be needed for them to take the children as they're being paid and it's in school hours so many parents wouldn't be able to take their children. Um, so the coach would most likely have to take the team in a minibus to and from the fixture. 
but no child should ever be left alone with a coach in a separate car travelling to it. The next responsibility I'm going to be talking about is professional conduct. There are many different qualities a good coach will display, such as remaining professional, having good communication, appropriate clothing, being punctual, providing good quality sessions and coming to the sessions prepared, etc. A paid netball coach for a club would be expected to show more professional conduct than a volunteer at a netball club. This is because a volunteer is giving up their own time to help train younger children, whereas a netball coach is being paid to be there and it's their job. Coaches who are being paid should be punctual and on time to all of their training sessions. This is because the players are paying for their time and out of respect they should be on time and not keep players waiting. A coach who is being paid has different expectations compared to a volunteer for a local club who is giving up their own time and has other responsibilities. Coaches should always do training sessions to a high quality and be prepared on what they're going to lead each session. A paid coach shouldn't turn up to a session and make it up on the spot, as it will make the session feel dysfunctional and unorganised. It isn't good enough if people are paying for it. Whereas a volunteer coach, it's more acceptable if sessions aren't always prepared in advance, as they will have other commitments outside of sport and are giving up their own time to help train, so it won't be as expected. As a coach, safety checks should always be carried out so that players are safe and to minimise the risk of injuries. A coach should monitor players and also check all the equipment is safe to use. Monitoring players is just about keeping an eye on players which are displaying some signs of abuse or mistreatment. It may not be anything, but as a coach, if you have any concerns, then just to monitor that individual to see if they change or get any worse. Then, at the beginning of sessions, coaches should check equipment is safe and stable. A coach for a league would be expected to carry out safety checks regularly. A volunteer coach of a local team would most likely do more basic checks of equipment to make sure it's safe, as they'll just be wanting to avoid injuries. A coach should always try to wear appropriate clothing for their sport. A netball coach should come in sporty attire, not in, dre in a dress and inappropriate clothing. They, should, they need to set a good example for the team. But for other sports, such as climbing or water rafting, the correct clothes is vital, and in some cases, if the clothing someone is wearing isn't appropriate, then they won't be able to participate, and in the activity it could be very dangerous. For example, wearing a skirt, rock climbing. This could be dangerous and inappropriate, as it could get caught on rocks, and it could cause injuries and be very dangerous. The next responsibility I'm going to be talking about is health and safety. Coaches must make sure that they carry out steps to make sure that the environment they are teaching in is safe. Before the session starts, the coach should ensure that the equipment they are going to use is stable and secure to reduce the likelihood of accidents occurring. They should also think about the climate and weather it's going to have an effect on their training session. For example, a netball coach may consider moving the training sessions indoors if it's rainy, as the courts may be very slippery. Different sports, however, require different safety checks. For example, javelin is a much higher risk sport, and so the coach should ensure that there's a lot of space that has been cleared and that the javelins have been checked beforehand. It's also important in a game such as rugby that the rules are being enforced and that fair play goes on. As if there isn't fair play and the rules aren't being followed, injuries are very prone. Their players need to be protected, so the coach must make sure that everyone is playing to the rules. The coach needs to make sure that they teach the players how to tackle correctly so that players don't get hurt. A coach also needs to make sure that at the beginning of a session, they need to check for injuries and make sure all the all jewellery has been removed. Warm-up and cool-downs is needed to be run by the coach to prevent any injuries. Anything that can be done by the coach to minimise the risk of injuries must be done. When travelling to away matches, the minibuses must be checked, such as testing the brakes and the lights beforehand. The coach needs to make sure that the, as they travel, the people have their safety belts on and that travel can be as safe as possible. The coach also needs to know procedures for if something was to go wrong at home or at an away game. They should always take a first aid kit and they should be first aid trained and ensure that on away matches the first aid kit is taken. Different sporting activities have different levels of risk. 
A kayaking instru kayak instructor would have a greater amount of safety pr procedures compared to a dance teacher, as the sport of kayaking is a much higher risk activity. Therefore, someone teaching kayaking would need to be professional and fully qualified compared to a dance teacher. In PE lessons nowadays, many teachers have to teach dance even to the, to the students, even though they don't specialise or have any qualifications in it. But in an actual paid for dance session, the coach would need to be a specialist and have a qualification in there as they're being paid to teach. The final responsibility I'm going to be talking about is equal opportunities. As a coach, everyone must be treated equally. A coach should make sure that their training sessions cater for all of the players and that they spend a similar amount of time on each individual, no matter what ability. A coach should never spend just all of their time on certain individuals as it will make the other, others feel left out and unwanted. Furthermore, a coach should never discriminate based on gender, race, age, religion, ability or disability, etc. A coach has a responsibility of making sure that they can cater for everyone on their team and involve anyone. To avoid, to avoid discriminating against gender, the coach should ask both genders to demonstrate, not just the boys or the, just the girls. For example, in a training session for young children in rugby, if the coach needs a demonstrator to show a, chackle, a tackle, he should involve both boys and girls. This is an example of treating all children equally and giving individuals opportunities to demonstrate. An example of an organisation with sports equality in a sporting environment is Kick It. Kick It Sports Coaching sets standards so that sport can be enjoyed by everyone equally. It aims to eliminate any discriminative behaviour. Kick It is part of a policy of equal treatment of all members to help enforce equal opportunities in sport and all members of this should follow the requirements laid out. Many policies which their coach needs to abide by and follow so that every child the coach is responsible for is treated equally. When coaching a very mixed ability group, it can be hard for a coach as the coach would want to help the weaker players, but all will also want the better players to progress and not be held back. To make sure that the better players aren't held back, a coach should have a drill which they can adapt to make harder or easier for the players who, are work who they are working with. But they do need to be careful when they give the drills to the weaker ones, as they may feel upset that their coach thinks they are not as good or may feel, and they may feel less confident. A coach should never pick out certain players constantly because they are different or because they believe in something different to the coach. For example, the coach may believe in a different religion to one of the players or some people may have a disability. A coach should make sure everyone feels included and should make sure that if they see someone being left out from a group that they help and encourage them to go and join in. Or if the person feels too shy to join in with the big group, the coach should split the big group into smaller separate groups or split that group up so that the player will feel more able to join in if there's only a small, smaller amount of people to talk to.